What is up guys and welcome to this whole collection of a fair few cars that we have had in over the past few weeks. Uh, there are a lot of these cars I was going to make individual videos for but given the way that the past few weeks have gone, the adversity we've faced and how busy I've been in not having time to edit and not put out videos, decided to sort of just pile them all into this one video for you guys. So it's a bit of a uh, timeline of how the last few weeks have gone with a few cool cars that we've been uh, looking after. So first things first was this very cool R31 Skyline that came in uh, based on the Sunshine Coast. This car, Ryan from Elite Fab Works, did all the fab. Aside from that, my understanding is that the owner, Jaden, pretty much built the car, everything else himself. So uh, even as far as the wiring, my understanding is that he wired the car himself. Uh, as you can see there, I had to chuck our seat on the floor because we didn't fit in his seat. So we actually had to pull his seat out and put ours on the floor so we could tune the thing. Too tall. Um, so it has an EMU Classic, uh, which is a new platform for us, completely new ECU. We've never played with an EMU before. Uh, as you can see, his whole fuel system he built in the boot here is actually very impressive. Everything was very cool. Uh, a few things we had to fix and change. We changed the fuel pump wiring and uh, a few other little bits and bobs, but overall, the, uh, the quality and the level of this car was, was great. It was awesome. So fully forged RB30, EMU Classic, like I said, which uh, for our first time playing with one, we're actually quite impressed at the capabilities that this ECU has, particularly for the price point. It is, uh, for the price, it is a very, very capable ECU. So like I said, guys, fully forged RB30. It's got a big Crow TX2 cam in it, Pulsar Gen 2 3076. Um, so pretty, pretty cool setup, this thing. We're pretty excited about it. Unfortunately, we had some alternator charging issues. This thing was charging all over the place. Classic RB alternator stuff. Not only that, but it was running a big 16 inch thermo fan, which was obviously drawing quite a lot of current. As we all know, these RB alternators don't charge at a very high current. And uh, once you start putting big fuel pumps and fans and stuff in these cars, you really need to upgrade the alternators anyway. So we sent the car back to the owner to fix and upgrade a few things and wait for it to come back. So next on the batting list, we had a very cool RB30 powered 180SX, another Sunshine Coast car. Uh, very, very basic set of this one, just a stock RB30. They just replaced the head bolts with head studs one at a time running on E85 with a FG Falcon 3076 on it. Very, very cool car. We had actually the exact same issues with this car, RB alternator charging all over the place. This one was actually charging at 15.5 volts, which was causing us a lot of other issues. Uh, it was causing these issues with the fuel pump relays. Uh, it eventually did kill the fuel pump, which was a pain, but uh, this thing also needed a new alternator. We persisted as best we could with this one to try and figure out whatever issues we would come across with this tune. Uh, and then we sort of put it to the owner what he wanted to do. He ended up just getting us to fix the issues with it. So you can see here it had a Warbro 460 in the fuel tank with the wiring upgraded all the way up to the bulkheads. But those stock bulkheads in these old cars, they do cause issues with pumps that draw that much current. So off the dyno it came. By this point, we then got the R31 back. So it ended up getting a new uh, LS1 alternator kit, which was awesome. The owner also replaced one of the faulty fuel pumps and we were back on track to get this thing sorted. So this thing was being full flex tuned. This is a street car, so full, full flex fuel tune on the EMU.
So a great result from the R31. Uh, we didn't really quite have the time to get it to settle on the dyno properly. It is a handful at this sort of power with those little 15 inch wheels, but you can see there 434 on 98, 523 on E85, which is an absolute crazy, crazy thing for one of these cars. Anyone who's driven one of these cars would understand that at that sort of power level on 15s, this is just gonna be stupid. But regardless, the, fire, the R31 is ready for Matsuri. Uh, so then it was time to turn our attention to sorting out the uh, the 180. In the meantime, we had the Supra in. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but probably started last year. I actually tuned a white RZ Supra, uh, full factory, full forged 2J. The thing was an absolute animal. Uh, his name was Cody. This Supra actually belongs to his father-in-law. He's been helping him build it. Once again, all the fab work taken care of by Ryan at Elite Fab Works. Uh, but this is just a stock 2J GE, unopened just with the turbo system bolted to it. Uh, unfortunately, it's still got the W58 gearbox. So uh, the owner's not really particularly worried about breaking the gearbox. He understands that it's pretty much inevitable with what he wants to do. But uh, what we've actually done is found a spare switch on the dash that's not being used. And we're going to wire that to the input, which is a link. Uh, this is a Supra link, so a link plugin for a Supra. Uh, we're gonna wire that to a spare input on the ECU so that he has a boost map switch so that he has a high boost and a low boost map to drive around. So that way he can go to the track, put it in low boost, know he can drive home, or if he wants to party, he can put it in a high boost and be prepared to take it home on a tow truck. So with that being sorted, we uh, started getting the 180 sorted, started pulling out the, uh, the fuel pump hanger and getting it all fixed up, getting it ready to go. Uh, I redid a lot of the fuel pump wiring. We replaced the bulkheads in the hanger, um, you know, all that sort of fun stuff. This was me looking at the Super Link and how we can actually get inputs and stuff into that. Uh, we need a little expansion loom, which I've actually since got from Whitey's wiring, which is awesome. We had a few other issues with the Supra, one being that these valve covers that were on it were leaking oil into the valley, into the, the uh, spark plug valley really badly. So we had to pull them off and start going through how to seal them up. So this is the 180 fuel pump hanger. Uh, while Rex was sorting out the Supra, I was sorting this out. Our new Raceworks 340 LPH E85 safe in-tank fuel pump with all new wiring, new bulkheads. Uh, this should never be a problem again. Uh, any sort of any sort of current draw through this bulkhead should never ever be a problem. So happy days with that. We we're getting the super sorted. While we were at wiring in the boost map switch off that switch on the dash, we actually wired in the AEM wideband signal so that it has onboard wideband. Uh, we're running it up on the dyno and we actually found that one of the wheels was very buckled. So we canned it until we got some more wheels for that because we didn't want it bouncing around on the dyno. Uh, so this is us actually replacing the alternator on the 180 with the LS1 alternator. This is Rex actually re-terminating the plug. We actually put a proper LS1 alternator plug on it so everything is proper. That's how it should be. Uh, this is a class 4 race truck that ended up coming in as well for a tune. Uh, full LS based race truck. This thing races fink and that sort of thing. Um, absolutely very cool thing. Haltech Elite 2500. Um, but yeah, this was a pretty cool rig to uh, tune and have our name on. So with it tuned on this Friday, it was then time to get the 180 onto the dyno, but we got the 180 on the dyno and it was making some horrid sounds. As you can see here, the inner bearings on our retarder unit for our 450DS Dyna uh, Dynamics dyno had collapsed, um, which was obviously not a good thing. These are the only non-serviceable bearings in the whole pit, so this is a big issue. So this was not cool. We had to pull the retarder out and actually send it back to Dyna Dynamics to get rebuilt. So that meant that our dyno was out of action uh, and wasn't going to be back in action before Matsuri, which had now been postponed, but yeah, not enough. So in order to finish these two cars that need to be ready for Matsuri, we actually had to get the cruiser out, uh, fix what we needed to fix on it from the new setup and get it registered because what we have to do now is actually tow these cars down to Brisbane to our boy there, uh, wide is wiring and he's allowed us to actually rent his dyno and his shop just to finish these two cars. Um, the second car that I'm talking about you will see in a later video but uh, the other car is this 180 that needs to be done for Matsuri. So we're not too worried about the Supra. Um, the Supra can get finished off when, I get, when we get our dyno back. There's no real rush for it but uh, some of these Matsuri cars needed to be sorted. So this is our new bead roller that we just bought so we decided to test it out on the Land Cruiser intercooler piping brought some really really cool beads uh, but yeah we've got the cruiser sorted ready for tow duties because it is required now
We made up some new heat shields for a few new things with the new setup, um, just fixing a few little niggly issues and had this thing registered and ready for work. So we loaded up the 180 and took it down to the boys there at Whitey's. A huge thank you for those boys for having us. Um, we know how annoying it is to try and work in a workshop while someone's tuning a car, so we do very much appreciate that. So with the new alternator and the new fuel pump wiring and the new fuel pump, the only issue we had this car all day was intercooler pipes popping off uh, because they weren't beaded um, and a few other just things about the intercooler piping built around the tube front. Uh, but apart from that, this thing went awesome. No other issues. You can see here us always trying to fix this intercooler pipe that just kept popping off no matter what we did. Uh, we ended up replacing it with T-bolts, all sorts of things. Later on in the day, towards the end of the tune, it actually developed a big boost leak, which ended up being the silicon reducer, which was on the other side of the intercooler. Lucky for us, Sam also had one of them in the shop, so Sam saved the day for us there. We swapped that out, again, replaced what we could with T-bolts, and it was happy days from there on out. So the 180 made relatively low power for what it was. We have since confirmed that this is Sam's dyno reading low, which you'll see in a later video. But uh, these are the wheels that we borrowed from Cody to fix his father-in-law Supra so that we can tune that when our dyno's back. This is the Cruiser, which uh, actually, when we got back from towing the 180 down, it actually killed a fuel pump, which we found a few issues with fuel pump wiring and fixed those, and it's back in action again, ready for the next one to tow down. But that's pretty much it. So uh, that's it for this video. If you want to see more of that Supra when the Dyna's back in action, please drop a comment and I'll make another video. Apart from that, thanks for watching, guys. As always, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out. See you. Bye.